Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Slated Double Features uh, with your hosts Joshua Francisco Mitchell and the lovely Matthew Vivian. Hello Matt. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, should I start off by apologising for my voice? Um, we were going to record this two days ago and I literally couldn't speak at all and we feel like the films have been out for a while now. Well, Five Nights at Freddy's been out for a while now. It's not relevant anymore. Probably let's just record it anyway. <laughs> and so I apologise for my voice, but... <laughs> It is what it is. You told me that your feelings for, for FNAF uh, were so strong that you had to get them out there. You had to push through the pain. They were, yeah. This is probably the most influential film of my whole life. Other than being horrifically ill, um, mm. hopefully with not COVID. We don't like to it's say the C COVID. word here. I've done lots of tests. Good. <laughs> have you been up to anything else? I have, yes. Right. So remember, <laughs> it was the last episode, um, I talked about this whole parking fine thing. I've been on the edge of my seat for this update. Right. There's an update. <laughs> so, on Friday, I got a letter in through the post from civil enforcement. And <laughs> oh now it God. says... From the Thought that, Police. <laughs> from the Thought Police. It was originally a £100 fine. Now it's 140 But... It says in big red letters, action needed. Your debt will escalate up to £170 plus cost. But yeah, that's it really. They just want more money out of me. Are you are you still kind of anti-paying it? Are you still going to hold off and risk oh, the price absolutely coming no up? way I'm paying a penny. Yeah. Go to your, your local MP. Write to them and say, I was well, doing I the Barbenheimer. The rather than doing it through like the government, I've done it through the cinema now and said like, Oi, this is ridiculous. I was a great customer <laughs> and you're trying to, trying to get £170 out of me. What is this, 1984? Yeah, I know, isn't it? <laughs> it's um, not bloody 2023, you wouldn't know. No, I know. He's... <laughs> it's evil. It's evil. <laughs> it's illegal to watch double features. How crazy is that? Our podcast these, is a crime. These days, you get locked up and thrown in jail just watching a double feature. Yeah, I know, it's true. Of course, Barmanheimer, they, they lock you up and throw away the key. <laughs> God, well, I'm so sorry. Again, we, we touched on it last week. I'm so sorry that you were doing the Lord's work and you've been punished for it. Yeah, should we do the letterbox thing? Yeah, lovely. Cool. Uh, now on to our, our weekly letterbox roundup, yeehaw. Mm -hmm. Yeehaw. Uh, I've got like five films, by the way. I hope that's okay, but I'll talk very, very briefly about all oh of God, them. Oh, God, yeah. Go, quick fire. You, you go first, you go first. Well, I spent most of my time playing Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 5. See, I don't have a PlayStation 5, but it looks like a very fun game. It is very good. I mean, you've only got a Nintendo Wii, don't you? That's it. I've got a, I've got a Wii. I've got a Switch. That's very modern. Very modern. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very good. A um, couple of issues with the story. I feel like Miles okay. was, was squarely a side character as, uh, as a co-lead. He didn't really have anything to do, but it was very fun. I liked Craven the Hunter. Get ready I for the like new Craven the Hunter film. Most of the narrative I've heard about this video game is that they made MJ ugly and people don't want to save her anymore. <laughs> wow. Because well, I heard, they... like, she's meant to be like 20 and I, from seeing the photo, I was like, well, I thought this was like a middle-aged Spider-Man yeah, thing. Like, yeah, yeah. No, so you, you are right. She looks a lot older. But they also changed um, Peter's face. Cause well, I they, played... did that, they did that during an update of the previous game as well, they didn't did. they? They did. No so... one liked the change. But yeah, very good. Craven is very good. Very ready for the Aaron Taylor-Johnson film. film. Yeah, uh, I'm really excited for that. Craven the Hunter, but he's actually the friend of the animals, not yeah. the killer I mean, of the animals. I mean, from the people we know who worked on that, <laughs> nothing but positive things to say. So <laughs> That is irony. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will watch it, but I'm... I mean, there have been rumours of uh, the Sony stuff being rolled into the MCU. No, uh, thank you. But... <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> but you don't want to see Morbius. You but want to see Morbin time. <laughs> Yeah, but it's really canon within the multiverse anyway. Like Venom yeah, but was everything in... is. Everything's yeah, canon well, in that world. Like, it doesn't matter. You could oh, turn this, up in the new Spider-Verse. You're canon. Like, I can not care about canon. It doesn't matter. Well, that leads on to something else we've been watching. I've been trying to catch up with Loki. And Loki being try. in the Loki TV show is the worst part of Loki. Because it just doesn't make sense for him to be in this like office, off, half office procedural, half like timeline thing. There's no need for him to be in it. He is like the most shoehorned part. It Owen Wilson's like great, and I think the back and forth he has yeah. with Owen Wilson is brilliant. But the character of Loki, like yeah, a Norse is. god, it's bizarre. It's really weird. I mean, I've only seen the first series. I really liked it. 
I will get to the second series. I just haven't haven't got a chance yet. You just heard it was woke <coughs> because they made Loki a woman in the new one. Well, apparently, I've heard really good things. Oh, I would like to apologise to everyone as well. Oh, we did trash. have a back That's and forth last series. week about adding Awful. a title to episodes, um, and the front runner for the title was Woke Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't go with Woke Hunters, which is quite sad. I mean, we get clicks, but it's not really very relevant to the podcast. I also saw An American Wolf in London, uh, and that was very that. good. It's good. I saw you gave it's it good. like a three and a half, and I think that's a travesty. I think I probably would have given it four. There's probably I, I don't think I was in the mood for watching it when I watched it. I think it's great. I think it's it's a tight ninety minutes. Mm. It hits everything that it needs to. I think the effects are are iconic. The, the effects are really good. Yeah, the transformation. I can't remember what I gave it. I hope I gave it a five because that's what you it gave it five. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Give it a big five. Right, I've got five things to talk about. I'm going to do it really quickly. So, I've watched mid. I watched Midnight Mass. Um, I'm currently watching Fall of the House of Usher, but I haven't finished it yet. Uh, but I, I watched Midnight Mass because I missed it at the time. Mike Flanagan miniseries, really good. Uh, great story, great characters. Uh, Haunting of Hill House was a bit better, but is it Midnight scary? Is I've heard that it's scary, so it's I haven't not, seen it. It's not really scary at all. It's actually. That's the that's kind of why Hill House is better in a way. It's Midnight okay. Mass isn't at all scary, I've... but it's good, good story. Watch it. Okay. <laughs> Four point five stars. Next up, I've got Bottoms, and I rewatched that. It's now my second favorite film of the year. Wow. Really funny. Um, I would say that and Super Bad are like the closest Americans will ever get to the in betweeners. It's interesting. It's a bit. Okay. There, there are the odd little bit where it's like it's a bit too silly, kind of where. There's nothing to take seriously at all. It's not grounded in any reality. So there's like a bit where a character, maybe like a teacher or something, would say something. And it's like, okay, no teacher yeah. would ever say that in a million years. But you have to just accept the fact that, I mean, I accept it more the second time than the first time, that it's just about being silly and being yeah. funny. And, and it's, no... it's American as well. So you've got to take yeah. that kind of level of humour in as well. Mm. Uh, but, you know what I'm going to ask about it? Is it woke? Is it woke? Number one. Yeah, but extremely. <laughs> And is the lead, the the lady from Bear, as annoying in Bottoms as she is in Bear? See, I've seen Ayo Edabiri in a few things now, and also on Letterboxd, and I think she's really funny and likeable. I've not seen the Bear. Okay. but I've she, only seen her in the Bear, and as April O'Neil really in Ninja in, Turtles, and she winds me up yeah. in the Bear to no end. She was really good in Bottoms. And she's also in Theatre Camp, another film that I watched, which I thought she was, again, my favourite character in. Really? She's not in it very much. Oh, all right. Um, I'll, I'll hold judgment until I watch them then. Theatre Camp, very, very funny <laughs> script, very good observations. There's a like a hilarious bit where it's like a parody of like doping in sports, but it's for using a tear stick. It was really, it's really good. They played it so well, but it did give me PTSD for when I lived next door to a, um, a theatre school in my first year of uni and when I'd go into the coffee house underneath and uh, they would just be there being annoying and harmonising and stuff <laughs> and so all the characters in the film are absolutely insufferable but it's quite funny three and a half stars is that the point that they're insufferable y- yeah okay I, these were meant to be really brief reviews they're not the next is the boogeyman it's rubbish next is the invisible man um, it's great it's really great I loved it um, there we go. That'll do. With uh, Elizabeth. Oh, the Elizabeth Warren remake. This one. Yes. My only negative was, you know, I'm not going to say this because I don't want to get whacked. I was going to say, um, it, um, I really liked the character. And then I found out that Elizabeth Moth was a Scientologist, and it made me not like her as much. <laughs> I did think though, like he's going to have to take off to like go to the toilet. Yeah. Like, what yeah, if he yeah. was just caught because he was just took his suit off to have a shit in her garden? <laughs> he's got his cock He's going to have to do that. <laughs> he has to go somewhere. <laughs> Good film. This was Good. a really long letterbox film. Big round up. This week we're looking at Five Nights at Freddy's. So this one's out for all of you Fred heads out there. Is you, that what the fans call? That's what they're called. Because I've never played the game. You'd be too scared. I actually it's for knew adults. nothing about... Yeah, I probably would be. <laughs> I played Slender. That was out about the same time. And that was a sort of similar, like, people on YouTube screamed at the top of their lungs to whenever anything happened. Markiplier pooing himself. I don't know. I didn't find it scary. If it was real life, I'd be shitting myself. But yeah, it's part of that that wave of low budget indie horror games. We had the Slenderman film. That but film. Everyone hated that. They did because um, I think it was bad. I didn't watch it because I knew it would be bad. <laughs> but I did watch this because you made me for this podcast. I wouldn't have seen it otherwise. <laughs> What's a non-spoiler free... Wait, that's not right. What's a spoiler free synopsis of FNAF? <laughs> I'm going to try and remember. So, 
Josh Hutchinson is a security guard, which is the least believable part of the whole film because he's five foot five. He gets fired because he tackles some dad who he thinks is abducting his his son because he, in the past, his brother was abducted and he watched it happen, but he didn't save him. Uh, so, yeah, he's a bit traumatised by that. Anyway, lost his job, needs another job, gets a security guard gig, another one. Who hi- Who's hiring him? But he gets it anyway. He's five foot five. Um, he gets a job working at Freddy's, which is like an abandoned sort of Chuck E. Cheese parody. Yeah. I don't think it really works for people in the UK because we don't have Chuck E. Cheeses. In fact, I can't even think of anything that's remotely like this yeah. with animatronics. Not really. I mean, like Brewster Bear like was a, the nearest. That's not animatronic, though. Like a rainforest a cafe. We have those over here. Anyway, what what was I going to say? So he's, he's like guarding there to make sure kids don't nick stuff or burn it down. So I don't really know because it's been abandoned for like 20 years. Mm. But um, yeah, he gets spooked by the animatronics that come to life. And like haunt shock. him a bit, yeah. And that's it. Really. Yeah. Oh, he's got a daughter. He's got no. He's got a younger sister, who he's speaking to like imaginary friends who seem to be ghosts, and she draws creepy things, and Classic. she seems to know some of what's going on. That's the movie. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good synopsis. What did you think? I thought it was rubbish. It was not good in really any way. I wow. actually I didn't realize until I watched it that. It was like a sort of family friendly horror thing. It was sort of like Gremlins, you know, it's that sort of level of. I've written like, down Gremlins as it's well. It's kind of a horror, but it's for, for my family. But I, I thought it would be genuinely scary. And so when it started, and it was clearly not that, right from the very like cold open where he's putting the mask on with all the. It was basically a saw trap. Like, I was like, oh, okay, so this is like for babies. Yeah. But um, yeah, I thought it. So obviously it wasn't scary. I thought the plot was really rubbish and it didn't engage me at all what are your views on it what did you think because you've played the game how did it compare to that um, like how, how similar is it and is the game much better the the game i'm pretty sure from, from what i remember is just like pictures that you're sat in this little room and you've got these mm. computer screens in front of you uh, and you're like monitoring security cameras throughout the shop. Okay. And you click on the the security camera footage, and it's it's just a still image, so you can see oh. where the animatronics are. Yeah. Um, and you have to like monitor your 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 battery because you can only use the the images for so long, and you've got doors that can shut for so so long, um, and you've just got okay. to make sure that the robots aren't coming to you to kill you. And it's just, oh, okay. it culminates with a jump scare if they get too close. So it's literally just still images. Oh, is that it? Yeah. You never see the animatronics move. You just see the jump scare at the end. Um, and, and the Five Nights, it gets progressively harder. Mm. Like, Yeah, because the Five Nights thing was like barely a part of the movie. Yeah. It was more just they had to keep the title. I'm kind of guessing it took place over Five Nights. It does seem like it was about that. Yeah. But there was, it never says like, oh, day one. Day two. It's never Which like is a shame, like really. It, it didn't have that mm. progression that the game does. I th- yeah, I think if they kind of had like a clock of like, oh, he only has to do five shit. Like, I just need yes. to get to yes, the fifth day. Definitely. Like, if there was that a, sort of a like ticking clock to, to it. it. Yeah, I think that would have been a lot better for like tension and build. Hundred percent agree. Film. But I thought, I thought yeah, the, the production was great. All of the, I the mean, it sets, looked exactly like the game. The animatronics are great. I thought so much love and and care was put into it, and you can see uh, because mm. one of the writers was was Scott Cawthorn. Um, he's the guy. Who he was the, the guy game. who did the game, so you can tell he's yeah. he loves this this IP and very clearly Blumhouse want to put a lot of money into it and want it to do well. Um, yeah, and I think they also they sort of got the. Um, the fans want it just to be exactly the game. Yeah. Like, the, none of the visuals of the uh, Adam Trinitz look in any way different. It's all just exactly yeah, identical. It's, it's almost a Freddy's one-to-one translation. Exactly yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it's just the fact that they've come up with a story because there's no real narrative. That's the issue. That's where it falls I down, I think. It's just, although it looks very faithful, it's not scary. Like, there are no mm. jump scares for a game that's famous for jump scares. No, there weren't. Well, they probably were, but I don't remember them because they weren't scary. And uh, the the story is just so nothing. Like mm. I I didn't really care for Josh Hutchinson at all. I thought the security thought, guard honest, th- was just there for exposition. Who the poli- the police woman? Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, yeah, she was just there for exposition. You're absolutely right. I thought Josh Hutchinson like actually his performance was like he did the best he could have done with what he had. I thought like he was given yeah. it all. Yeah, but I, he was I mean, very strange casting. May, maybe that's it. Maybe he didn't have enough to to mess around with. But for me, the highlight I was like, was Matthew Lillard. If he wasn't in it, yes. Yeah, see, I kind of feel like I personally didn't 
really like him very much in it. Really? I like him as an actor, and I think he was sort of suited this sort of film. He knew exactly what it was, to... and I think yeah, he, he, he performed... Absolutely, but I wish it wasn't what it was. <laughs> I wish it was something different. But for what it was, yes, yeah, he nailed it. He uh, This was directed by uh, Emma Tammy, who hasn't really done mm. much, and I think... No. I think that shows... Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I wish that there was more of a, a creative driving force behind it other than Scott Cawthorn. Um, yeah, 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 it seemed like, yeah, she didn't add anything to it. It was just the game and a bit of script. Yeah. Like, there was no, yeah, there was no, no flair to with it. The vision yeah. No, 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 um, no. It's very clearly a Blumhouse joint that they've put like 20 because million into film. it. And it's, it's made. It's a horror yeah. film that isn't A24. It's yeah. a Blumhouse joint because they, <laughs> they have a monopoly on the horror every single horror film <laughs> but immediately from from the first scene so it it cold opens this isn't a spoiler because it doesn't play yeah. into the rest of the film it cold opens with the security card before josh hutchinson before mike and you find out what happens to him and so why the mm-hmm. job is now vacant and immediately it's got those rising strings to show tension yeah and then yeah. cut off into silence <gasps> mm. And then he sees an animatronic, and I was like, "Oh, straight away, this is a a Blumhouse horror. It has all of the, it hits all the beats that it needs to. It's got like scary ghost children. It's got bleeding from your eyes. Yeah. I think it's like a twelve A. It was a fifteen. I don't know why it was a fifteen, <laughs> but it was. Um, I'm shocked by it that. Was, I think it was PG thirteen in the US. Yes. So yeah. No, yeah, that's where I'm getting it confused. Was um, and and really, if it wasn't for for Jim Henson's Creature Shop who did mm. the animatronics and the puppetry, um, this would be a lot, lot, lot worse. There would be nothing about this that's worth seeing. But I still, I didn't, I wasn't wowed by the animatronics. Like, they didn't really do very much. There was only, there was one, I didn't find them scary at all. And but, that's um, with the direction, I think. But there was one bit that I found, I think it was Freddy, scary. And there was one time ever where Josh Hutchison's like sneaking across the floor. He came out of a vent and he's sneaking across like the floor and hiding underneath the stage while they're performing on stage. Mm. And he just like, Freddie just like turns at him and does like evil eyebrows. <laughs> and I thought that was quite creepy. <laughs> and that was it in the whole film. <laughs> it was the only time I found them scary. You ready to jump into yeah. Spoiler Town USA? We'll do some spoilers. Yeah. Sick. Matt Pat is in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's the most the audience reacted <laughs> In the whole screening. And then when he goes like, well, it's just a theory. Yeah. What a highlight. What a cinematic I highlight. I quite liked that. As much as it had absolutely no place in the movie, it I didn't know. take up too much time. <laughs> Apparently, you know, Markiplier was meant to be the security guard in the opening scene. I read that. And they I reshot it because it was too distracting, which I think it would be, to be fair. I read that. I, I heard that he had scheduling conflicts with his own film that he's directing at the minute. Oh, because I know I saw Matt Pat's video talking about when he's in it, and he's on the wall as like in the like the cast grid. Oh, is say, And it says it says like Mark Plyer as um, like Freddie's security guard. So I figure like that's the only time it mm. must have been that opening scene, surely. Yeah. Oh, that would have been funny. So I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> they maybe they didn't shoot it at all in the end, but that was the plan. The, and then also the taxi driver was a YouTuber, but I don't know. Yeah, no idea. He was in the post credits as well. No idea for that. Which I didn't. I don't. What's the point of that? Oh, yeah. I, I literally didn't even get that. that is that toy haunted? Uh, I thought the whole time it was just weird. It's a robot from the second game, which the second film is going to loosely follow. um, Okay. Jason Blum's come out and said. Um, I liked the little little animations during the opening credits, uh, which are mini games from the big game. That was quite cute. Like the little Atari style thing. That was that was. Mm. It's it's very in in all of its production design. It's so characterful. Great. Yeah, but only because it copied the game. Yes. It didn't bring anything to the table. But being a horror film, there is one thing you need to do that this film does not do, and it is be, be scary. scary. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't succeed. I, I watched this, and I, I think you've got a, a similar kind of bit you want to touch on. If I was mm. given the Five Nights at Freddy's script and told, do this and make it scary, I would have two things in mind. It would be Alien, and it would be mm-hmm. The Strangers. They, they showed the animatronics off fully, immediately so there's no yeah. mystery around it like an alien you don't see the alien until the end and i think it should be you should build to see the animatronics but i i feel like you can't avoid that i think you have to just live with the fact that they you see it from the start but i think if or maybe or maybe uh in a different context because they are always well, maybe, lit the same and they're always shot the same from well, being yes. on stage to being so on i actually 
like being a threat. Well, I think we should have seen them like being positive and not creepy for much more at the start. And then when they turn creepy, then I think it would have more impact possibly. Yes. Or it would undo it. What? But I, I think it would... I think it was weird how we never really saw Freddy in its heyday. Like, he watched some, like, VHS tape at the start mm. where you saw, like, some stuff, but not very much. But I kind of wish we, like, properly, like, opened with, a, like, a scene in the past in the hey- heyday of Freddy's. Yeah. Well, it's even, like you said, having the, <clears throat> the if it was explicitly five nights, he has to do five nights. Yeah. That during the day, his, his sister could be there and she could be mm. on stage, like, turning them on playing them and they're literally just animatronics exactly, singing and dancing yeah. and that is a completely different context to at night when it all changes and it, it does become like alien and you, you see them in a different context and they're lit differently and it's darker and it's moodier and and i think like until like like the first three days or something you could have it so uh you could there's still like a rational explanation more psychological could than, kind of, yeah. yeah so people could like gaslight them into being like no this is like you know you just yeah you know they, they move yeah of course they move sometimes it's just like power spurts or something yeah. they're not following you you know they could... like them looking at the camera or something that from his little yeah. security room have you seen the film the strangers i've seen the second one. Oh, the first one has I was at uni it has a surprise glenn howerton in which is always great i know i know he's in it. Yeah, i think he's in it at the start <laughs> but which the... makes me think he probably dies immediately but the the first half of the strangers like you've got the first act setting up this broken relationship and then you get into, as we've said, like there are hints that there is someone around mm. and there's a shot of... Arwen? What's her name? What is her name? Her. Liv Tyler? Liv Tyler. Liv That's Tyler. Right, yes. Spot on. Um, so there's, yeah, so she's just sent her boyfriend away and her smoke alarm was going off, just beeping throughout the, the first act, I think. Mm. And then she finds it on the floor. So someone is taking it off, taking it off and she's like, oh, it must have fallen. Uh, then she mm. goes to get a, a cup of water and it's just this this single shot and you follow her as it pans to the sink as she gets a, a cup of water and in the background is just one of the the, the strangers with the mask on mm. just stood there. They don't move. They don't do anything. Yeah. But it kind of takes you a second to, to look at the frame and go, why are we sat here? Like, what are we supposed to be yeah. looking at? And then you see him and you're like, oh, shit. Okay. And she puts her cup away and, and moves away. And then you go back to the same position and he's gone. And mm. that is exactly what this should have been. Because yeah. seeing the animatronics move isn't scary. It looks dumb. No. It is a limitation and, and isn't horror because and they look like puppets. Over. You would kick them over. Yeah. But things like that, like a Weeping Angel kind of esque approach to it, where you don't yeah. see them move, but they just kind of appear. Yeah, and you just hear stories about them. You hear them, say yeah. They move, where it's it's, you hear, it's like, pure the, the like atmosphere thing. being built up until yeah. the climax, where you do see them in full, and you you see them trying to do like saw traps on people and all that jazz. Mm. Not that oh, the the twist is that they're actually good and they're actually there there are children in them and they just they just want see, new I, friends. Not scary. I, I didn't mind that. I thought that was a good twist. But it does not do well for sequels. No, because no, they're what not they horror characters. Do. They're not scary. Yeah, and they revealed that way too early. The... It's like a final twist. Yeah, that works well. But it, it it wasn't a final twist. It was just meant that we didn't have any villains for most of the yeah, movie. Yeah, the twist that Matthew Lillard, the only other character in the film, other than yeah, the, the aunt. second <laughs> I saw him, I knew he would be the villain. What? Like, there was wow. No, the, and like, he recognised Josh Hudson's name, and then he tur- he's yeah, he's turned like, <gasps> I, I I just, it. Okay, well, he's. I'd love to give villain. you the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my favorite character bit is the the character trait of Josh Hutchinson's Mike is that he just loves kids. He just loves kids mm. so much that he he beats up dads for them. He's so passionate about kids, and that is such a no, great but that character made sense trait. Because he's, <laughs> no, but that made sense because it was it was because he thought he was abducting him, and his brother was abducted, and he didn't do anything. <laughs> so now in the now it, in the present day, like he would go and do it differently, but he didn't. I thought that was alright. He just loves kids, and there's nothing wrong with. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, Matt. I'm just saying that he loves no, kids. No, but I, it's not that. <laughs> it's, he doesn't want kids to be abducted. Towards the end, they explain how the animatronics are haunted, and Vanessa, mm. who is our uh, exposition machine, says, "Oh my god, they yeah. they searched yeah, Freddy's top to bottom." But yeah, they, they said, but he was he was smart. He was like, he was evil, but he was a clever man. So he hid him the one place they'd never look. The animatronics. Why would they look there? Yeah, but there's one of the the animatronics is a tiny handheld muffin. 
How the is there a body that. fit in a muffin? I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how that's no. that's the only kill, really, is is the muffin killing a guy. He's the most OP one, yeah. <laughs> That's it. The animatronics don't kill anyone. Even at the end, well, they, they don't kill Matthew Lillard. He kills himself. It's it's somewhere. like They're, such a like a clash, like a real fundamental clash within the film that being written and being headed by Scott Cawthorn, the guy who did the games, mm. he wants it to be so true and so authentic and so properly done. But from the presentation, they know that it looks stupid showing a puppet killing someone. So even when yeah. you see Josh Hutchinson get like scratched and, and cut, oh, it's yeah. done he's, by the kids. He's, he's having a dream. It's not. You don't even see the puppets yeah, yeah. do it because they know it looks stupid. Because he's dreaming at the yeah. time and he wakes up and they've already done it. Yeah. So although it's it like presents itself as this authentic experience for, for those Fred heads out there, you don't even see it happen because they know it, it can't be executed yeah. properly in the way they're doing it. It's it's really <coughs> weird. It's it's so it weirdly is. done. Uh, um, do you want to hear how I would do it differently? Do, yes, please. Now, stuff like this, like what we were just talking about, like how they're not scary and all this, there's nothing I can do about that. If we have to make a film about it, like like seeing them running around and stuff, like yeah, you just have to live with the fact that it's never going to be as scary as other films. But um, right, so I would I have it so Mike is like really familiar with Freddy's stuff with like he it was his favorite place as a kid like uh, whenever he went there for birthdays yeah. like he was obsessed with it yeah and so we get to open up seeing him like seeing him in Freddy's seeing Freddy's in its heyday like kids are loving it and so what do you have that contrast for when it's not like that later on but yeah he's he's it's his younger brother's birthday party there right and not just in a random forest in the middle of nowhere because I thought that was really stupid yes. how, how like, it wasn't even linked to Freddy's at all it was linked to the fella, yeah. but not to but then, the pizzeria. So I was thinking, like, okay, so which one of the animatronics is, is the brother? And they're like, no, it's none of them. Yeah. Well, well, Where is the brother Why then? did we do that yeah. then? Yeah. So I'd have it so um, it's his brother's birthday party, and his brother's not very like popular in school. Um, his whole like school year is there, but they're not like showing him any love. Like They're just like hanging out, not talking to him on his own birthday. Mm. Um, and don't get him presents and stuff. His, his, Mike gets him like that plain toy but no one really gets him much. So his parents are like, this is really sad. We're going to go to the shop opposite and get him some in. Mike, you just watch your watch your brother. Uh, but Mike just loves Freddy. He's watching the, the sing along to the dance, whatever. They're, they're doing their big special song and he takes his eye off his brother. His brother wanders off, never seen again. Flash forward to present day and we still do that stuff about security guard. Obviously you have to not cast Josh Hutchison. <laughs> it's Josh Hutchinson, isn't it? I keep saying his name wrong. You mean Peter Hutch- from The Hunger Games. Oh, yeah, Hutchinson. Yeah, I wouldn't cast him. Peter. Uh, not that he did a bad job, he's just too small. If the <laughs> job at Freddy's comes along, obviously he doesn't want to take it because he of his past with that place. But you make it so that he is so struggling for money that yeah. there's no other jobs can come just just yet. He needs to put food on the table for a week. He just has to do five shifts there and that's it. Then he can move on. And so he'd be like, okay, fine, I'll do a week there. Um, I'll do five nights until my next job Freddy's. comes through. And or, then he looks or, at the camera or, and says, I'll do five nights. At, at Freddy's. Freddy's. It then Matthew adds Lillard a layer knew, to knew it was him. to uh, William Afton, our revealed villain, that he's then mm. really sad- sadistic and is like traumatizing this, this poor guy on him. purpose. Yeah, he knows he's, he's going to probably kill him before he gets yeah. a chance to pay him. So and it's and he knows that he's got all this trauma from this place because yeah, it's exactly. about the pizzeria. The first night, it's pretty normal. Like he he has the personal. I think he finds it really creepy because of his experience there, uh, but it's all normal. Like you see, I would have, le- I'd have like a lot less lighting in the film because yep. I didn't find it scary at all how all the lights were always on. And much. it juxtaposes like, the flashback of... to to the eighties or during exactly. the day. There shouldn't be a big button so that I, says turn on all the lights. I would have, yeah. So I'd have a lot of sort of really dark, but he's using his torch to look around, sort of thing. Mm. Like, but yeah, to start off with. He's terrified because of his experience there, but it's not nothing's out of the ordinary at all. The animatronics aren't moving, nothing like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't really from. think you even need the child in it. I don't think so either. I completely agree because I think there, I the think threat should makes, be to him. It's, it's a horror. Yeah, exactly. It's not a thriller. He, it's not even really that he's scared. It's more that he's trying to protect a different character. Yeah, like he doesn't care if he's in danger. He cares if she's in danger. It's like, well, hang on, but we're following you. Yeah. Anyway, at one point when the animatronics are live, one of them, I guess it would probably be Freddy, shows the like plane that he got them as a toy, 
like the present he got for his brother and he's like this like enrages Mike because he's like how dare you bring it up to me like whatever this is really you know you're traumatising me from this but anyway he takes it to like one like a side room whatever and he's dismantling it to see he must be like right they're, they're animatronics they're not haunted or anything like how are these being controlled um, and then rather than just being told in exposition that there's like children's bodies inside them I would show he opens it up and there's like a bin bag with like all the like decomposing goo and bones of a child because I think that was hard when when she mentioned that that was really horrifying in my mind yeah but then I knew that they would never you know. I think it's but yeah we it's do it's mentioned in in like one of the audio logs during the games that one of the reasons that the pizzeria closed down is because the guests started complaining about like the, oh, the gunk smell. oozing out and the smell that you should yeah, be seeing see, it shouldn't like a pristine uh, yeah. animatronic See, it's from I the 80s it should be was... grotty and disgusting and rank yeah they were like barely grotty yeah. the fox one was in a right state and then the rest of them were fine yeah so yeah i'd have him like find like a child like decomposed body uh, and then he sees from the clothes like it's his brother and then i guess it would come to life and then he'd be like oh my god this is horrifying my brother has been alive like controlling this puppet the whole time for like decades and then like right at the end you can do the whole thing like, oh my god they're kids being controlled by the baddie but i wouldn't do that so early yeah towards the end he could go back to the to the guy who got in the job and be like look i don't know what's going on all these things are happening to me yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the fifth night it, it's revealed that he's he's the guy who's been doing this all and brings a child yeah, with him and like he's like i'm yeah, gonna do it again and then that yeah, that's he should if you, have visited him since if you want the the threat of saving a child like he's going to put another child mm. in i i thought uh, not not tense but a scene that you could have really lent into is when the girl first meets the the animatronics and she's like hugging freddy and yeah and he's like don't touch that because it's very clearly yeah, a ghosty yeah. robot and might kill you yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think that's a much more personable way to do it. He has more stakes in the plot rather than I just... So. I mean, it, it does... It, it, wouldn't le- yeah, it wouldn't be great for a sequel, but... Yeah, no, also, I'd end it with... Rather than him just getting crushed by that thing, I would just have them, like, beat the shit out of him because that's the best way to end any film. Well, yeah, do like, something more horrific than... It's it's all implied. It's all... Yeah, I'd have... It's all kids' horror, really. I, I honestly think the best way to end any movie is just that more beating the shit out of the villain. Mm. Like... That's how Bottoms ends. That's how like Death Proof ends. <laughs> it's so satisfying. And I think this would be a good one for it. A, a little fun fact. But, yeah. When Matthew Lillard is in his uh, golden rabbit costume at the end, he cleans his knife mm-hmm. in the same way that he does in Scream. Yeah, I saw that. Classic. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. then I, I put the pieces together in my head and went, no way, is that Matthew Lillard's character? I, yeah. I wouldn't have got it otherwise. Oh, what's this character called in, in Scream? Uh, Shaggy, isn't it? Stu... No, Shaggy, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> it's, is it Stu Marker or is that the other guy? Uh, yeah, Billy Loomis is the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Stu, Stu. Yeah. That's, the, that's his character in Scream. Yeah. I gave it um, two stars on Letterboxd. I think I gave it one and a half. Yeah. I think they're both I really, very I, fair. I really didn't get much out of it. But... I rated it higher for the production value. I think it looked... The, the whole world that they crafted was very cheap. cool. Um, but just let down yeah. by by direction, by cinematography, by writing. Um, otherwise, I think it could have been very good, very novel. Yeah. For me, I think having a horror with, with such great puppetry work is child's play. Yeah, I do too. Um, right, yes, let's talk about child's play. <laughs> oh my God. I have... I don't have much to say about it, to be honest. I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was a good film. You do a little summary of it. Non-spoiler summary. <sighs> Bloody hell. Are we doing non-spoilers for, for our old films? I mean, everyone's seen Child's Play. If you haven't seen Child's Play, go and, and watch actually, it. there's not really any yeah. spoilers. Yeah. You know what it is. Yeah. It's a haunted it's a do- 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 doll who stabs people. So, Child's Play follows uh, a mum and her son um, for his birthday. And he really wants this good guy doll. Um, which is taking the world by storm. Uh, however, they're all sold out. So the mum, wanting to please her son, I don't know any of their names, uh, goes to a, a backstreet uh, vendor. Andy. I remember the kid was called Andy because it's the same name as the kid from Toy Story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go, And that's Andy. About, like a toy coming to life. So I remember he was called Andy. She goes to a backstreet peddler and buys a good guy doll from a shifty fellow. But this isn't any mm. good guy doll 
This good guy doll has been imbued with the soul of a serial killer from many nights mm. before who was shot by a detective who shows up later um, and puts his soul through the power of the devil or, or some sort of satanic worship. Yeah, voodoo, I looks things. Voodoo. He used like a voodoo doll. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, but it's not explained, but it doesn't yeah, need to be. It doesn't need to be. It's, it's impossible. And uh, it's slowly revealed that he is alive inside this doll and it starts off by uh, influencing Andy uh, just by whispering in his ear so he can go off and kill his his loose ends from life. And then at the midpoint, almost exactly 45 minutes through, it's revealed in a big way uh, to the mum and to the adults <coughs> that he is alive uh, and kicking. Mm. Uh, what a classic yeah. piece of horror. Yes. Have you seen it before? I have seen it before. Uh, directed by Tom Holland. I um I thought yeah, Tom I Holland was like 20-something. So I don't know how he did this in, I know. in the 80s. That was great. Um, He's a very talented bloke. So Tom Holland also directed uh, Fright Night and some Stephen King adaptations. Yeah, he did the, Lang- the Langoliers. The and Langoliers, stuff, which is like yeah, the worst, worst CGI in the world. <laughs> uh, Bill um, Butler was the DOP. Uh, he also did yeah. Jaws, Grease, The Conversation, and Rocky's Two to Four. But Bangers. the real standouts uh, were were Brock Winkless, who was the lead puppeteer, who also did T Two, and Kevin Yeager did the uh, the makeup effects for the film. Mm. And I I truly believe that if it wasn't for the presentation and the puppetry in this, it so like hits all the ninety minute. The, the marks you need to do in a 90 yeah, minute yeah. film it's so standard Definitely. that it, it yeah. would have just faded out of out of the zeitgeist but that puppetry and that iconic like horror tape keeps it alive it's a film that lives on its iconography really like yeah and if, if they made him look a bit rubbish then he wouldn't have done it <laughs> I don't know it's like any slasher film it like, is yeah made loads of them yeah and if they're not if they're not an iconic character who you could milk and well, yeah you think about Chucky in the same same breath as like uh, Michael Myers as uh, Freddy Krueger as uh, yeah. Jason although Jason took yeah. like six films to become the iconic I Jason is it the fourth one I think he wears the hockey mask for the first time uh Yes, I've only seen and the then, first three, and I don't think I've ever seen him in it. In the mask. fourth one, and then he dies in the fourth one, and then the fifth one is a copycat, and then the sixth one he is like iconic yeah. Jason. Um, but yeah, yeah, same same conversation. Uh, it's great. You always see people dressed up as Chucky for Halloween, mm. and I think it would have been different if we didn't have Brad Dourif played Chucky. Um, great performance. Yeah. Really sells it as uh, the guy at the start. And as as yeah, Chucky threw out, I saw um apart from what's his name Pippin from Lord of the Rings, Billy Boyd, Billy Boyd, Billy Boyd. Apart from Billy Boyd, who voices the Chucky's son in one of the sequels, everyone who's ever voiced a one of the creepy dolls in a Chucky movie has been nominated for an Academy Award. Catherine Hicks was very good as as the mum. I think she yeah. really sells it. It must be hard to act against. A doll and yeah. and Chris Sarandon's always great. Um, wh- um, what did you like about it? Going into it, I thought this won't be scary. I don't find Chucky scary. I've seen the to- toys everywhere. Mm. You know, I've seen all the Annabelle films, and I think like she's scary because she looks scary even when she's not. But I yeah, I mean, obviously, I've seen Chucky's face a low time before, and I'd never found him scary. I did in this, I think, because it's so built up slowly, and it's like like what we were saying how. Yeah, Alien, like you never really see him. Predator, you never really see him. And then when you do, it's right at the end and it's, you know, for one scary moment and then that's it. You see him loads. You see him through the whole film and you're always hearing like, oh, he's Eve, always oh, talking, mm. Chucky told me this, like Chucky did that. And we see the odd bit of like a Chucky point of view, him running and pushing someone or whatever. But we see, yeah, but we see so little of that. And yet like we hear so much about him and yet we just see his like innocent face. Yeah. And I found that really creepy, like how he was just a normal toy. Yes, but we but we know that he's not. Yeah, and I so th- almost when he started, when he came to life for the first time, it kind of made it less scary for me. And Immediately all, straight in, you go, there is no mystery. You know that yeah. he is haunted. You know who he's haunted by. You know the threat. So there's no mm. mystery around it. Us as an audience, True. there is pure suspense. We know what this doll is capable of. So even when you you see him as a doll you know who's inside and what could happen and it's only when you hit that yeah. halfway point that you're like oh shit okay so this is this is happening now it's like i mean the whole thing in horror is the scariest things are the things you don't see the things that your mind paints for you like yeah. that's why so much that's why darkness is such a big thing in horror because we we can't really see what's going on we might see a little glimpse and then our brain tricks into being so much scarier did you ever get this with horror films you see the behind the scenes like the person in the suit yeah. standing in like <laughs> yeah. the costume truck yeah like and it's just like, okay well this isn't 
this isn't remotely <laughs> like the side man having a fag photo <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so I think so something that that you're always going to run into, especially with the the narrative at the start of oh no one's believing the child. It's mm. it's going to be very hard to find a way that's convincing to then convince an adult. And I think yeah. the the batteries, what a great and succinct that way, was... and and it yeah. it like pushes Chucky as as a character as well to then have to out himself. Yeah. That, that she I knows the jig thought... is up. I thought, I mean, I obviously knew, like, you know, by the end of the movie, she's going to know. But I thought it would be, yeah, he just reveals himself to her. But then yeah. it's like, why would he do yeah. that? Because he's, it's perfect the way he's doing it, where she doesn't believe the kid. And From that point, he then comes alive and goes off doing his little errands. And he goes to see the, the voodoo mm. man who gave him the power to, to pass his consciousness onto, into a doll. Um, and it's revealed that the longer he spends in the doll, the more human he becomes. And I don't know if you've mm. picked up on the puppetry on the face it changes yeah. from like the doll and starts to look more human as it goes on i it, know like, it becomes Chucky's more grotesque and receded yeah, as it disgusting happened. as it goes yeah, it's yeah. really like really subtle really well that. done um it was, that was great but i mean so does that mean like physically because they say they need to shoot him in the heart does that mean like his internal organ and he had like blood i mean yeah. like his internal organs are it, like it must be human. yeah mm. well like cause that, that's why i thought the whole film like whenever they're like fighting him he's like he doesn't weigh anything he's a doll the very first <laughs> time like when she's about to throw him in the fireplace and then he like turns alive and like, says like don't do this and like <laughs> just throw him in yeah but he's like she's he's like a devil doll don't him. forget he's He's got the power of Satan on his he's side. Got, like, devil powers making him stronger, but it was. <laughs> and don't forget, I don't know. he has two fake out deaths in this. Mm. That's how powerful he is. He dies and then comes back and then dies again and then comes back again. I, I, know. <laughs> I know. How is he alive? He was just. He looked like Anakin, kind of Revenge of, End of Revenge of the Sith, <laughs> at the end of the movie. Yeah, I, I think this kind of falls into the Gremlins category again. I, I think this is yeah. good, but I don't think it's as good as Gremlins. I think. Gremlins, Gremlins is a great it's, film. It's, it is. It's, it's flawless. Yeah, it it's takes, one of the best Christmas films. Takes it's that, really... that idea of like the, yeah. the small small puppetry, like Critters does it as well, but mm. takes it into every scenario that you could think. Where yeah. where would you want Chucky? In what scenario? Gremlins has done it. They have been yeah, there. Definitely. They have caused problems there. Um, yeah. And Gremlins is good because you got sort of when they are revealed to everything like in the midpoint like when Chucky was revealed and we said like oh that means there's no real stakes there's no real scares like at that midpoint in Gremlins Spike jumps into the swimming pool and multiplies yeah. to like hundreds and hundreds of them and so you've got that escalation yeah. that means that it, it can still sustain the, the threat and the, the horror but also Gremlins is really funny like it's not just even if you don't find it scary, you're still gonna have a great time with it because it's it's so it's such a funny film. Hundred percent, and yeah, I I didn't find Chucky overly scary. I thought it was a very good film. It was good. I think I gave it three and a half because it's like I don't really feel like I need to see the sequels or really no. need to see it again. But it was fine. I, I enjoyed it. Um, you gave it a three and a half, and I gave it a three. I'd probably only give it a three, actually. I think I was more being like, I didn't want to get told off because it's a classic, and I only gave it a three and a half. That that half a star was dropped because Andy was so bad. <laughs> he was such oh, he a was bad a actor. <laughs> Have you got any takeaways? What are you going to carry forward from uh, from FNAF or from Child's Play into your future work? I think we talked about all this throughout, pretty much. What about you? You answer this one this time. Um, I've actually already done a short film with a puppet in. Um, so these are all things that I already know and I've already perfected. Have. I um... haven't, and I want to, and I love puppets. <laughs> I'm a big puppet fan. I mean, I... Oh, Matt's pulled Kermit out from behind him. <laughs> Hi, hold Kermit. I can't do the voice because my voice is so good. <laughs> Hi, hold Kermit the frog here. That's, that's Kermit after a big night out. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it right now. But look, I've got a Kermit right here. I'm, I love puppets. Yeah, I, I do wish that I'd done a lot more puppetry watching before making Helping Hand. Um, although it's a completely different kettle of fish. Uh, well, that was puppet. like, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to say stuff, but then I was watching it and being like, this isn't how you do puppeteering. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's something that we, we encountered while doing well. it, is that we had lovely Dan, who plays um, the dad yeah. in it, and, and he was kind enough to do the, the puppeteering. Um, mm. And I think he did a great job, but 
uh, as you said in in these films you have tens of puppeteers doing all these different things yeah, yeah. and oh i saw how many were credited oh, for chucky there's man. millions yeah but we we just didn't have the time for that we didn't have the budget for that but if yeah. i was to extrapolate forward just the way they work around what they don't have child's play in particular mm. the the limitations of of using puppetry and especially in fnaf as well not using cgi to fill the gaps because uh, they're very yeah. very open with the fact that all of the animatronic stuff is is practical and is is actually yeah. there and shot on camera yeah i think it's great i think it's it's more about what you don't see and making it yeah. work with the limitations finding interesting and innovative ways to get the ideas across that would be easier with a person um but can't with a little a little one foot tall doll that <laughs> I <laughs> runs think across when the it's counter. just someone in the costume though it's like really really obviously that like it doesn't look like chucky it looks like he's about two feet taller yeah and he's behaving totally different and they have movement that chucky hasn't been able to previously have yeah like when he jumps up in the fireplace i remember like that being yeah, a moment it, where it's someone in the I costume his face is moving as well yeah. when the rest of him is <laughs> because these days you'd have it'd still be a puppet probably but you'd have like a green rod or something moving and then they'd paint that out yeah yeah it it makes me think of um this the shot from is it empire or is it from return of the jedi where c-3po is on chewbacca's back in cloud city oh yeah what is that empire i think it is isn't it that's empire um where they they spent all this money and spent all this time making an animatronic for c-3po to move (coughs) on chewbacca's back because he's talking the whole mm. time and you can clearly see that there's no one there um yeah it's just the bag and they spent all this this time and money making animatronics for it and it just didn't work on the day so rather than them freaking out about it the, the props master was like give me an hour and i'll figure it out uh and an hour came and went and they tried it again and it worked flawlessly and I, i'm i think it was the first it was like how have you done that in that time like you, you don't know robotics you don't know animatronics how have you done that and he said, well, I've just stuck a piece of string on it and I'm pulling the string. <laughs> and it looked great. <laughs> it looked better than, than the animatronic. Wow. Yeah, I love stories like that. I never heard that before. That's a good story. On to our double features. Back uh, again. Go ahead. Mm. Give, give us one. Right, so I forgot to come up with any and so I just came up with one. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I kind of got two. In which case, I'll get I'll get one out of the way that we already discussed. Child's Play and Toy Story is a kid called Andy <laughs> has toys that come to life. Yeah, there we got go. Andy from a parallel universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's an obvious one. Um, and then the only other one I've got is for Five Nights at Freddy's. I've got um, Bridge to Terabithia, which is just a Josh <laughs> Hutcherson childhood trauma double feature. <laughs> so for... For FNAF, I've got uh, FNAF in Midsummer, uh, for bears mm-hmm. that I wouldn't like to be inside of. Yes. Um, and then I've got That's FNAF and Brother Bear <laughs> for bears that I would like to be inside of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, That's and, a good one. And Child's Play, I have Child's Play and Annie, uh, small ginger leads who change a new family's worldview for better or worse. Better or worse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice. Do we have any messages? Lovely, we do have a message. Uh, we got a message on our last podcast on YouTube from Caitlin Moriarty. Um, Who's sounds that? like a, a very kind, uh, kindly wow. fellow. Uh, she said, You two make me giggle. Um, oh, thank I you wish... very much, Caitlin. Thank you. you thank you for the, for the note. Next time, could you be a bit more constructive with your feedback, please? You d- mm. We're not really getting much from it. We want to try and make the podcast better. Um, so, yeah, next time, maybe think about what you're posting before you do it, please. Yeah. But yeah, thanks very much. Thanks anyway. And that's it. <laughs> Cheers. Wow, thank you. And, um, and Ali Keelan said, get well soon as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I can talk a bit now at least. So we, we still haven't got any, any listener shorts to come through. So please, if you have any, uh, any ideas, <coughs> any shorts you'd like us to talk about, please send them through. Um, mm. But this week, we thought we'd look at a horror short from one of the, the modern horror masters, uh, the lovely Ariasta. Yeah, um, I wouldn't call him lovely after this. <laughs> and and his, his short film, uh, which I think uh, predates uh, Midsummer and, and Hereditary. Yeah, it does. It's um, 2011. It was like a student lovely. film. The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. Uh, it was a student film because the the credits are huge. I don't know where well, he got the money for that <coughs> film. Yeah, but it was like one of these like prestigious film schools. Oh, okay. Like the schools that we came from. <laughs> mm. 
It's not the 99th best university <laughs> in the UK like I went to. <laughs> you do. Do you want to do a summary? Go and watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, it's just under 30 minutes long, um, so it's on the longer side of short films. It didn't feel it, very long, though. It is a, it is a short about a, a relationship between <laughs> father and son. Um, but very much touches on on abuse and See, trauma. I would say, yeah, I would and... say don't go into it knowing what it is. Yeah, I I really like the fact that when I first watched it, I was like, what what is happening? I think if you go into it knowing the like log light, and then it sort of yeah. ruins the whole point. The it the first scene sets you up for one thing, and then it kind of comes out that it's not that, and it's significantly worse. Mm. it's yeah if if you haven't seen it please go and see it before we talk about it um this is your your three second warning <coughs> the strange thing about the johnsons is that the the son feels a strange thing about his dad johnson <laughs> <laughs> oh bloody hell yes yes it does <laughs> what a messed up film i love it Imagine his father watching that. I know, I know. Because I think... he must have thought about, like, if he's thinking about that situation, he must have thought about his own situation. He was he was asked in an interview for, I think it was Midsummer, like, how much of you is in this film? And and he said, there's there's always a lot of me in everything I make, but I, I hope that no one can see the, the real parts of me in the stories. Um, and I hope that's the case because the there, there are one, some yeah. things you need to talk about, Ari. Yeah, um, I did think. You know what? I feel like a little short concept. I thought it was really good. Like it, it yeah. covered um, like abuse, and I think it did in a very. It was sort. Of, the concept was like at first like comical, and then you, you're like, oh, actually, this is really horrifying, and they're playing it so straight. And I think it handled the subject matter very well. While also doing obviously the twist that it's the other way around, it's the son abusing the dad. It was really great. I thought the performance was really good. The dad especially. Yes. Well, the, the son was, I would say, he's the greatest actor, but he was really he was creepy and like threatening, and I felt like, so sorry for the dad. He was really so dead eyed, wasn't he? The the son. Yeah. And I thought the mum like until like near the end, I was like, oh, is she not going to say a word this whole movie? Because I don't think she did earlier on. Oh, well, no. No, she, no, I think she said, like, face the front or something in the photo. But, like, just her change of expression in her face, the more when she sort of realises what's going on, and then she's just living with it. So great. And then she does talk at the end. Living I don't think with... much to say, because it's, so, it's so... It's exactly what it looks like. It says it's, exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah, it's so tight, um, and it always builds builds the the stakes and and the scenarios that they're in, that it's yeah, also very it, subtle... And but I also did. I feel like it did pretty much everything it could do with the concept. It was, um, yeah, you know, it covered all the beats of like an abusive 100%. relationship, all the all the like sort of scripted thing, like yeah. the all the manipulations, um, very manipulative but in, in a very interesting different way. Yeah, I I think there are there are some topics in there that I I wouldn't want to talk at length about because I I haven't um, ever encountered a situation like that in no, my life, and I'm, yeah. I'm very feel very lucky that I haven't. Mm. Um, but yeah, what what a, a horrible horrible story! Like in in the the best way possible, what like really shocking in yeah. in every way. And I think <laughs> it is very clear how that then led into Hereditary. Um, oh yeah, that that, that family dynamic, it. that breakdown of mm. of like the nuclear family, the your neighbours like the Joneses down a, yeah. a suburban street they're just a, a regular looking family but behind closed doors there is just a whole other world that is is kind of bubbly under the surface and it was man was it a ride <laughs> yeah because i've only seen um hereditary in midsummer i haven't actually seen Bo is afraid which from what i understand is like less of a horror and more this sort of tone is it i think it's it... a bit more comical I mean, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think at the start it sets it up to be a bit more comical, especially the dad's performance when he's in the room. You think, oh, oh he's yeah. a bit, he's a bit uh, hammy. He's he's chewing the scenery there a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, like, as you said, because they played it so straight, it very quickly changes tone, um, mm. and and you're kind of on board with how absurdist this abusive relationship is. But yeah. Bo is afraid. I think is is the next step of 
absurdism um, yeah. so much so that it almost alienated the the wider audience who saw it and and that's why it it failed yeah because i didn't watch it because i heard it was like three hours long and yeah i just heard people not being very positive about it so i was like well i'm just not gonna waste my time go to the cinema to it then and i will watch it at some point on streaming mm. but a great to. performance isn't it um so similar to this he's he's a great director he knows exactly what he oh, wants yeah. and he knows how to Absolutely. how to get what he wants out of an actor out of a scene um, I think mm. there was some very interesting uses of of lighting in this as well, like the long shadows for the the sun, yeah, um, S O N not S U N, and interesting in framings like uh, of, the dad coming down the stairs. Off screen sometimes, yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah. When he comes down the stairs in the sun, you only see like his legs. Yeah, that or the well. the bath. Yeah, he's like yeah. that. That when is an escalation, and yeah. you don't ever see that. You you see from the mum's point of yeah, view whether face, she was she puts the volume up and yeah oh, whether yeah, she was an screaming. enabler or whether she was was abused herself um well that's the thing like you spend a lot of when i watch it you, you are sort of like well why aren't you leaving him why aren't you telling yeah. anyone but yeah that makes that seems logical but then mm. this is such a realistic thing about the sort of the father and son don't being switched like, yeah it's such a realistic it's, it happens like this absolutely does happen yeah it was horrifying because you know mm. that even though it seems like something no one would ever do we know for a fact that it is i know and even how the sun gets out of the bath and puts his wet trousers back on um yeah. i think just sums up everything you need to know about his character mm. <laughs> but yeah what a what a horrible horrible short to watch on halloween which is when we're recording this it is halloween Very today fitting. yes I need to watch a Halloween film. I'm not feeling Halloweeny at all. I've only watched a few horror films this month. What should I watch today to get me in the spirit? I I want to try and watch The Exorcist tonight. I want to try and convince Caitlin to watch The Exorcist with me. Um, I think it's, yeah, it it's takes very a long important. time to get going because it's all like a family drama. Yeah. So yeah, I, um, I'm going to try and watch that tonight. It is good. Have you seen it before? I haven't. No. I've seen it, and yeah, I mean, because I, obviously, like our generation generally finds it more sort of funny and not scary at all but i yeah it's it's not very scary but it's good <laughs> it's basically a conjuring film have you seen a conjuring film i haven't no no uh, it's it's like a conjuring film but it's it was came out in the year where they're all set is it anything like five nights at freddy's because i've seen that one it is nothing like it other than it was shot on a camera and it has a microphone <laughs> for the audio can can I show my my Freddy Fazbear tattoo <laughs> in confidence while watching it, or should I hide it away? Oh, loud and proud, brother! <laughs> 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 um, unless you've got anything else you'd like to like to say? No, I think I'm going to rest my voice for the rest of the that day. That is a great idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, lovely. So, if anyone has any letters, our our email address is is always wherever you listen mm-hmm. to us here. Um, if you've got any short films, if you've got any other uh, cursed double features you'd like to send over, we're always open mm-hmm. to, to reading those out. Next week, we are looking at David Fincher's The Killer. Ooh. Mm. Is that out already? It's on Netflix, isn't it? Yes, I think it had a limited cinema run and then is on mm, streaming nice. now. Yeah, so thank you very much, Matthew Vivian. Thank yeah, you for, for coming, even though you're, you're very ill. that's It's always it's much good. appreciated. And it's thank fine. you on behalf of everyone listening for the, the car park update. No, oh, yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's not very interesting. It's just they've they've asked more money now. <laughs> um, but we'll see where that goes in the future weeks. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. See you on the next one.